And then you go on, they go on, then they went on, the people who found meaning went on to have resourceful and successful lives. The people that found no meaning in their experience didn't. It's a mathematical mind equation. Want to get logical about it? It makes sense. We need to do the math. We need to come up with an equation. The math is whether you want to sit on reasons or move over to results. Does this serve Decide. me or That's does this simple. knock me down? Does this something to learn from this experience or is it dominating and going to control me for the rest of my days? My dad at 69 was talking about when he was bullied when he was six. At 69 years of age, that came up over and over again. That's a tragedy. That's 69, well, 63 wasted years in my book. If he's hanging on to that thought as of being a big driver, He's missing things. He was missing out on so many things because he was attached to the thought that he was bullied when he was six. He had seven children, a beautiful wife, a great life. And he had this fight in him, this, this desire to fight the world because the world was going to get him. It was a shame. It was unnecessary. It wasn't even the truth of who he was. He was very loved. We so don't when, need to wait 69 years. We so can do sit it back now. And watch your movie of your life, you want to sit on, oh, I wish I don't know, I wish I don't know, this, wish I don't know. You want to just say, yes, I'm glad I made that choice. Change that meaning and look what I've got. Look at the children I've got around me, look at the family, look at the business. Whatever I decide to do, I feel fulfilled. Because at the end of that time when you kick back, it's back. It's not, I'm sure those, we, we'll sit back and think, well, I wish I should have made more money, all these sort of things. We know really at the end of the day, we should spend more time with my family. We want to make sure when we watch our movie, it's like, yes, I'm happy. I've done what I've done. I feel fulfilled. Mm. How about I was bullied and I learned so many things. I learned how to deal with people like that. I learned how I could survive something like that and still feel powerful and still feel proud of myself and still feel loved. I could still feel loved. What a great resource. What a great learning. And he sat there. In that world, it was, it was, it's a shame to watch that. It's a shame, shame to watch some of the perceptions stay narrow. Because it's so much, there's so much information in that. There are so many resources in all our stories. Every single person in this room has a tragedy. We all have tragedy. There's a lot of us. I've had four miscarriages. We all have enormous reservoirs of pain. But they do not need to be our drivers. They do not need to define us or describe us. They can serve us. They can serve us to have greater compassion, greater love, greater energy, a greater gift to the world because we can show the world that it's possible to have that experience and feel good. It's possible to have that experience and be a positive, empowered, and life energized person. Or we can sit and talk about it forever or hide it and pretend it didn't happen. Hello, Robinson. <coughs> yes, sorry. Um, just, I wanted to add that Thomas More um, has written a really great book, Care of the Soul, and he thinks really? that with me, Pat, <laughs> yeah, darkness actually develops death. <laughs> so, um, and we always remember, if we look at nature, there's light and dark and there's there's sun and there's rain and you know like it's just part of the cycle it's part of the whole mm. and um you know by by being okay with the darkness that really develops a depth in our soul and connection to the spirit mm. when you fall apart you get to put yourself back together i love that feeling i love that feeling of recreating myself i love the fact that i have laid on the floor and cried and felt like the whole world was a disaster I love that thought because I got there, just like J.K. Rowling, I've done that. And if I can do that and survive, then the whole world opens up to me. There's nothing to fear. There is a season for everything. That's what they're looking for. Those people are afraid of failure. They need to fail and recover and then they can go on to fear because you realise 
that there's certain companies, um, I don't know which one, I just heard the story, but they, they have a bell that goes when things go wrong in the company to celebrate the learning. Yeah, okay. and when the kid was the same with the kids, something goes wrong, we're like, right, what have we learned? What, what could we do differently? What could happen differently? What can we change? It's, it's so empowering for the kids. That's, they go there really quickly. Okay, what can we do differently? How can we address this? And it's not the same, which we have all three of. We have three, we have things that happen. And then you have your season for it. I actually really enjoyed grieving for my dad. I enjoyed grieving for him because I could abandon myself to the grief. I felt very, very, very sad and I wanted to because it acknowledged how I was feeling. I enjoyed that opportunity to go into that emotion. Because you don't get there very often. You don't get that depth very often. It's really great to be there. It's very creative, actually. It's a really powerful state to be in. I enjoyed it, having the peace and distance from, from the world for a while. That was my learning. I got a lot of learning from that. It was a lot of power and solitude. I think it was Einstein who said that. <coughs> so we were in down our big bye-bye butts. Sort of